Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to, I would like to thank uh, <coughs> Andrea and uh, the organizing committee. Uh, I would like to, uh, today my role is to counteract uh, what Jack uh, uh, just uh, said about the, uh, the uh, surgical approach to endometriosis always and whatever, even if uh, in the last part of his talk, uh, uh, we may have a sort of conjunction of the two positions. Um, I'm not convinced about uh, the uh, possibility that surgery is uh, always uh, the harm of the doctor to resolve the problem of the woman, uh, whatever it is, the life uh, uh, in which uh, uh, this disease occurs, and whatever is the need in this particular moment of the life that they want. Uh, and also, in the four, in the four uh, point that uh, Jacques uh, represented, uh, for instance, that the, the symptom dermatology occur in 95% of these women, uh, that is not really always happen. Sometimes we have 20 to 25% of women with deep infiltrating endometriosis doesn't have uh, this kind of symptomatology that uh, uh, put the life in not qualifiable way. Uh, and the second point is that not always uh, is, uh, it should be considered as a tumor that progress anyway always uh, because uh, uh, sometimes it remain uh, in the same position for a long time even with symptom. Uh, we have to remind that uh, the node of endometriosis contain for 60% fibrosis and only for 30% glands and stroma which respond to estrogens and may increase in size and in symptoms. So, um, and the third point is that surgery uh, is ameliorating the fertility. That uh, uh, is an evidence for stage one and two, but not for deep endometriosis. Deep endometriosis is not always the surgery uh, improve uh, uh, fertility. Uh, the fourth one is that sometimes it's true uh, is uh, improving the possibility for IVF. Uh, <clears throat> but I think that we should come back for a while uh, to the uh, uh, pathogenesis. And uh, we say that pathogenesis of deep infiltrating endometriosis has nothing to do with uh, the uh, uh, retrograde bleeding and the Samson theory. Uh, I am not completely agree even with this point because I think that this is uh, when the doctor doesn't have the proof uh, uh, tell you the story, and everybody of us have a story. Uh, uh, is a tumor or is a retrograde bleeding? I, uh, I am convinced that is a retrograde ble bleeding just because in everywhere endometriosis uh, in different percentage contain glands and stroma. Glands, uh, stroma may come from other district of the human body, such as uh, mesenchymal cells or peritoneum that may transform in the sidewall in the stroma cells. But the epithelial cells doesn't come from nothing else rather than the endometrium. So uh, the endometrium uh, uh, have some bit of the endometrium that came out from the uterus, or if you want to have an alternative uh, theory, you, uh, you may uh, imagine that during the differentiation there is an entrapping of uh, some epithelial cells in somewhere. But uh, uh, it's different to think about the, uh, the, <coughs> the node as a tumor. Uh, on the other hand, we have, uh, for my story, some uh, observation that may confirm this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, story. The epidemiological studies show increased incidence uh, with cumulative exposure to menstruation. The incidence of endometriosis is increasing in girls with genital tract obstruction. And that is not only for superficial endometriosis, but even for deep infiltrating endometriosis. Lesion tend to be uh, clustered around structure in close proximity to the distal end of fallopian tubes with the most dependent portion of the pelvis increasingly involved. Uh, we, 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 we saw just now the, uh, the, the picture in which uh, in the rectum we have in the anterior part rather than in the other part, just because it's a, a question of gravity. Uh, experimental endometriosis has been induced in animals by placement menstrual fluid or endometrial tissue in the peritoneal cavity. Endometrial cells can attach to woman pelvic uh, um, organ and growth. 
uh, enhanced uterine contractility in patients with endometriosis, uh, contractility is abnormal in that, in that, in that patients. And a significant reduction of recurrence of endometriosis after endometrial ablation. And finally, when you put an uh, IUD medicated with uh, anti-proliferative uh, uh, epithelial cells in the, in the lumen cavity of the uterus, such as uh, uh, levonorgestrel, you reduce the recurrence rate. So <coughs> that are some, uh, 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 some evidence that support the theory. Uh, endometriosis, we know uh, uh, the pelvic pain is one of the most important symptoms, and uh, uh, we have also uh, some digestive symptoms. So laparoscopy uh, is uh, the gold standard to make a diagnosis, so I cannot defend uh, the medicalization of uh, endometriosis if we don't do the, the laparoscopy, because uh, the diagnosis of endometriosis for definitions is made by laparoscopy. I can sustain medicalization of the symptom related to endometriosis, but when we are, we are speaking uh, medicalization about endometriosis, we have to speak about uh, the possibility to uh, interfere with recurrence rate of endometriosis, starting from the diagnosis of laparoscopy. And we know that if we find endometriosis during laparoscopy, we have to make uh, a, a treatment, not only a diagnosis, for sure. So <coughs> the in uh, coming back to the symptom, uh, uh, sorry, typically uh, endometriosis uh, causes uh, 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 pain and infertility, yes, but in 25% of the patients uh, is asymptomatic. And that uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is something that is out from the uh, appearance of the endometriosis in, uh, uh, as a 60% as a dysmenorrhea, uh, chronic pelvic pain, and whatever. Uh, <coughs> other symptoms are digestive uh, uh, problems, this um, symptom, that, uh, uh, that are symptoms that require very often uh, the surgery just because uh, uh, the woman doesn't accept nothing else rather than resolve immediately uh, what is the, uh, the, the digestive problem. <coughs> Increased concentration uh, of uh, macrophages around the area uh, and the lymphocyte are, um, uh, with the elevated container of cytokine are probably the reason why we, uh, the people suffer for uh, uh, pain. And, uh, uh, and, and that is uh, one of the point that is uh, 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 focused on the technique to, to be used to resolve the problem, the, 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 the resection or the disexcision or uh, to, uh, to make only the, the superficial place. I think that uh, that is, uh, is most, uh, more appropriate to remove only, only the part that uh, have contained the, uh, the node and not the, uh, the complete excision. Uh, here, we already, <coughs> we already saw in, uh, in Jacques' presentation the uh, different uh, classification of dipping inflated rate in the uh, endometriosis, but one point is common in all uh, representation, uh, that is a disease that is multifocal. And, uh, and uh, when the disease is multifocal, you may resolve surgery with the surgery part of this problem, but it's difficult to resolve all the, the focus inside to the abdomen. You can resolve the symptom related to the, the most important node that produces symptomatology, but you cannot uh, uh, resolve the disease itself because the disease may occur also the day after of the uh, surgical approach. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> different classification, the one of Shar uh, uh, that makes some uh, uh, more detailed in classification, the one of uh, Philip uh, that we already uh, saw before, and the other one that uh, used the same approach uh, as for the tumor uh, to uh, classify the same problem. And finally, uh, the classification that uh, Elisabetta made by using the simple, uh, the simple ultrasound, but the, uh, in a in very excellent way. So uh, reproducibility of uh, this classification require uh, an expertise uh, in ultrasound that is not very common. I think that uh, this is uh, the key point uh, of our story. 
When we are using drugs to resolve endometriosis or symptoms related to endometriosis, or we uh, use drugs for, for every other disease in the medicine, we need randomized controlled uh, trials. Uh, when uh, <coughs> we ha are talking about something in which uh, 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 there are no randomized control uh, trials, uh, we have uh, thousands of uh, uh, surgeons that use a general principle uh, uh, on the endometriosis rather than the, the evidence of the surgical approach itself because we don't have evidence. So we have only story to, uh, to tell you and our experience that I wanted to remind you that in the hierarchy of the evidence remain at the fourth position. So it's quite weak in terms to affirm something absolute. Uh, these are the medical treatment uh, that everybody of you knows very well and that may serve uh, possibly to prolong the uh, time for the surgery and uh, possibly to uh, prolong the interval between uh, surgery, possibly uh, to avoid second uh, uh, approach of uh, surgery. We have the uh, painkiller, we have the oral contraceptive, we have progestins in which uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, induction of the situalization of uh, stromal cells and antiproliferative action are very uh, active in counteract the, the proliferation of epithelial cells due to estrogens. And uh, uh, in, uh, in that part, we would like to include also the old danazol that is, uh, as we know, the C19 derivative from testosterone and it is quite active on the, uh, the, the, the core of the endometriosis. <clears throat> and also the GnRH analog uh, that are used to prolong this interval time. <clears throat> the surgical treatment that uh, we, uh, we already saw from Jack all the techniques, and I'm convinced that the less invasive uh, that we can is uh, more appropriate as a final part. And here, there is a series in our group of uh, 212 uh, uh, patients with uh, deep endometriosis uh, in which were treated by uh, uh, medical treatment uh, as for painkiller, for uh, uh, contraceptive pills uh, and uh, uh, GnRH analog, A1, A2 and 3 and uh, with the, the three different approaches uh, uh, with uh, Bauer resection, uh, with disc uh, uh, excision and with shaving and uh, finally, we don't have a, a strong difference in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, significance uh, and amelioration one to the other. But for sure, uh, the uh, major complication that we have with the bowel excision uh, is uh, much higher rather than this excision, and that uh, is confirmed what uh, Jacques already said. Uh, the clinical manifestation of uh, severe endometriosis, unfortunately, are variable, are not common and uh, unpredictable in both uh, presentation and course. And that is the reason why it's very difficult to say and to uh, affirm guideline to manage this, this lesion. Uh, excision of endometriosis is more effect than uh, uh, placebo in some series, but medical and surgical treatments are, uh, f um, are effective on symptom relief, but the difference is difficult to compare uh, because uh, uh, we have to consider that in some experience, uh, placebo effect is ranging uh, between 40 and 45 percent in relieving symptom, and that is uh, something that uh, give uh, us uh, nothing in the hand. The strategy of medicalization of surgery should be planned according to the concept that endometriosis is a, 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 um, a chronic disease with the main goal to relieve uh, uh, digestive symptoms and relieve the pain uh, and to have a baby maximize, maximizing the use of medical treatment and avoiding repeating surgical procedure. Uh, surgical treatment uh, followed uh, by medical treatment may prolong the interval free of pain uh, and uh, uh, then the surgery alone, of course. Uh, operation with the deep involvement of bowel and removal of reproductive, uh, reproductive organs should be preserved uh, to women with debilitating symptoms that already completed the reproductive life expectancy and who did not 
respond to other medicalization. Surgeons and patients should consider more carefully than in the past the incidence of major complication uh, in the decision making for aggressive surgical approach. And uh, deep rectovaginal and rectosigmoid endometriosis surgery had approximately 10, uh, 5 to 10 percent of major complication and should be surgical treated according to uh, symptom reliability, age of the woman, parity, perspective of fecundability, and established uh, surgical risk and its priority in the quality of life that uh, we, never, uh, we have never for, um, forget. The recurrence rate of endometriosis should be considered in the surgical approaches, considering that, uh, considered as the new safer policy to manage patients with endometriosis, the less surgery as possible, with the multidisciplinary management for the symptoms and with an invitation to achieve pregnancy as soon as possible if, if uh, that point is uh, in uh, his expectancy in that period of life. When we are uh, talking about center who can manage uh, surgically uh, the deep infiltrating endometriosis, uh, we have to respect at least uh, what uh, is indicated uh, as an excellent center for the management of endometriosis. But uh, even in, in that uh, essential uh, requirements for the center, we have an uh, evidence-based approach, but what is the best evidence-based approach in deep uh, infiltrating endometriosis? We don't have uh, deep in, uh, the, the uh, evidence-based approach because we don't have randomized controlled studies. So we have a, a lot of story. One is Obuleti, the other of Jacques Donnet, but we don't have evidence-based uh, uh, approach. So, <coughs> uh, and also uh, we have to be sure to have included also uh, in the multidisciplinary approach, some other uh, uh, skill, professional skill that can manage what the patient asks in that period of life. If they wanted to manage the pain instead to undergo to a big operation, we have to respect them and we have to manage them in uh, the same way. Deep endometriosis, uh, is fr um, uh, deep endometriosis uh, of the rectum, uh, uh, we know that is a chronic disease, we heard in the, in the previous presentation, lead uh, uh, a severe, to a severe impairment of woman health by progressive pelvic pain, deep dyspareunia, and generating various digestive complaints such as uh, diarrhea, constipation, uh, tenesmus, etc. <laughs> women uh, presenting uh, uh, deep uh, infiltrating endometriosis usually uh, uh, experience also an uh, uh, unqualification of uh, both the, uh, the uh, life expectancy and uh, work uh, life expectancy. The term uh, deep infiltrating endometriosis of the rectum designates an involvement of the muscular layer of the rectal wall, while endometrocyte implants are exclusively involving the digestive cirrhosa uh, and could be uh, considered superficial. Uh, as regard of uh, histology, deep endometriosis, as we mentioned before, uh, may contain only 24% of uh, uh, estrogen's responsive tissue. Uh, even so, uh, the, the, in the management uh, uh, with medical treatment, we have to consider that biology, the biological mechanism responsible for endometriotic implants uh, are not influenced from uh, uh, the surgery. Thus, the new lesion may form as soon as the day after the surgical procedure, as uh, we mentioned before. Uh, the risk of reference uh, is uh, 20 to 40 percent. And that is another uh, argument to use the surgery uh, uh, at the minimal uh, that we can uh, use it. Continuous uh, uh, post-operative hormonal treatment may prevent pain recurrence after surgical removal and uh, uh, of the deep uh, uh, infiltrating nodules. Uh, and uh, also, uh, what procedure I wanted to serve on these uh, two slides because uh, uh, we are completely agree with uh, uh, Dr. Donet about the technique to be used when the surgery is required. I want to conclude there is no evidence to support uh, the risk of recurrence as a valid argument in favor of colorectal resection uh, over rectal 
nodule excision. That's, it. I think, it, it became a point. Uh, the advantage of a lower morbidity associated with nodule excision is not necessarily uh, at the cost of an increased rate of pain recurrences, especially in women uh, benefiting of postoperative medical treatment. Uh, the symptom-guided surgical approach in uh, uh, deep infiltrated endometriosis uh, primarily focuses uh, on the relief of digestive symptoms and pelvic pains rather than on mandatory car carcinogenetic uh, resection of the lesion. In addition, the risk uh, of the new postoperative and pleasant uh, symptom as a result of compulsory uh, uh, and systematic excision of uh, endometriotic foci uh, may, must be avoided. Uh, in the majority of cases, pelvic anatomy and digestive function can be restored by shaving or disc excision, as we heard, as uh, well as a colorectal resection in the same way. Uh, uh, two, uh, digestive complaints can be resolved even when the rectum is uh, conserved. Instead of choosing <coughs> between medical and surgical management uh, of treatment of uh, deep infiltrating uh, endometriosis, it's most likely uh, that the two therapy should be associated. Uh, therapeutic amenorrhea over a period of several months may lead a decrease in endometriotic nodule volume uh, by up to 30%, and that is inducing the decrease of symptom symptomatology. On the other hand, <coughs> however, the uh, decrease in the volume even if a small decrease because of a small amount of glands inside is enough to ameliorate the symptomatology. When efficient control of pain and digestive symptom is obtained by continuous medical therapy, only surgical management uh, uh, of uh, deep infiltrating endometriosis could be either postponed for long term or uh, definitely avoided. And I thank you for your attention.